Today's anime review is Erased. Erased is a... well, it attempts to be a mystery anime, I guess. Anyway, it stars a guy named Satoru, who is an introverted 29-year-old attempting to become a manga author. Unfortunately for him, he apparently has no personality in his writing, fitting because he has no personality in general, so he's still struggling to find his place in life. This appears to be due to something that occurred in his past, which involved the murders and kidnapping of several children in his area, and those memories have been completely sealed off from him. Later on, his badass of a mom finds a clue that might lead to the identity of the killer, but unfortunately for her, she is killed by him before she can do anything about it. The killer uses this as bait to frame Satoru, even though there is literally no evidence that could be used against him for this, but he's an idiot, so he runs anyway. Then, unexpectedly, he time warps back into his body of his 10-year-old self. Or 12-year-old self. Who cares, he's a kid again. Oh yeah, I forgot to say that Satoru has a superpower of sorts that randomly sends him back a few moments because of reasons. And because of reasons, it sends him back really far in time, despite it never doing such a thing before. So yeah, it starts off confusing, but I won't argue. Also kind of exciting, and the tone of the first episode is really solid all around. It's just unfortunate that the actual show is kind of lousy all around. Story-wise, I'll cover more in the story section, but I'll give you the basics. The main thing this show centers on is Satoru trying to save the kids that were previously killed in his childhood now that he's been given a second chance to do so. While I say other kids, but it really, it only focuses on the character of Kayo, and pretty much no one else. Her whole thing is that she's being abused by her parents, so Satoru basically spends the majority of the series trying to figure out a way to get her out of her situation, and also to warm her heart a bit, as at first she comes across as apathetic and distant. Truly, there are a lot of good scenes between the two, and even though her character is of course simple and easy to root for given the circumstances she has, it was nice that the series took this seriously rather than being overly melodramatic about her character. That's the main thing in which I can think Erase does positively. It's very restrained with a few exceptions in terms how characters act and their reaction to things in general, not over the top anime reactions. Even when Satoru does get over the top mad, I would imagine most of the audience watching it would feel similar to him, given the circumstances he has to deal with. The big issues comes from the fact that Kaio's circumstances are the only thing in the show that get any focus on or spent any time on, while absolutely everything else is just kind of there. The mystery is shallow, flat, and completely predictable, and every other character basically feels the same. Plus, towards the end, it feels like an entirely different show altogether, and it just becomes hard to care. Also, show. You know if you try to use cliffhangers at the end of every episode, it eventually will get dull? It made me go from, gee, I wonder what's going to happen next, to... probably nothing. As for characters, it's a really unbalanced cast. Satoru, the main character, is well-rounded in terms of strengths and weaknesses, despite having a superpower, but the problem is, everyone else isn't. His mother, Hairi, and Kenya are all Mary Sues that make him look pathetic in comparison. Especially his mom, who is portrayed to be just this ultra badass who doesn't have a single flaw in her. Granted, doing this for a mother character is kind of effective to a degree, so maybe I'll give her a slight pass for this one. Otherwise, it's just a really, really mishandled, poorly done cast, and no one really plays off each other. There's barely any chemistry between any of the characters, except for Satoru and his mother, to a degree. Perhaps what the author's intention was that since Satoru was the one who had a superpower, he wanted to make sure the other characters seemed really badass to make up for that. But the thing is, Satoru has no control over this power, so it hardly makes him feel that special at all, unlike, say, the balance between Okabe and Kurisu in Steins Gate. I bring up Steins Gate because some people actually seem to want to compare these two shows just because they have a time travel element in them. However, here's the thing. Steins Gate is a much more goofy tale with some serious moments. Erased, for the most part, takes itself completely seriously the whole time. 
It's a matter of tone and execution. They're completely different in these two sides. Just because someone likes a race does not mean they're gonna like Stein's Gate. And just because they like Stein's Gate does not mean they're gonna like a race. Unless the only thing that matters is time travel. So, I would say Erased is much closer to, say, Life is Strange than Stein's Gate. Both are sloppy messes with unbalanced casts, so they fit in very well together. The only area that really shines in Erased is the production side. Once again, I like how restrained the show is with its soundtrack, not just its characters, and the fact that it's willing to be quiet most of the time. Kind of like a technolize, a mushishi, a lane kind of feeling. Uh, though comparing this show to those shows is pretty sad because uh, those shows are all way, way, way better than this. It really does help with the atmosphere, at the very least, in the first couple of episodes. Even if even that mostly fades over the course of the show. Overall, the show just looks and sounds good, which is probably why it's so popular. Well, that and it had a pretty strong beginning, but who knows, I really can't tell you why certain shows are popular. Overall, Erased is a pretty flat show that is more style over substance. I do hope it's more restrained and less overly anime nature as applied to more shows for sure, as I'm a big fan of the likes of Lane and Mushishi. But from the terrible story to the mishandled cast, everything about the show just feels really empty. However, considering it's only 12 episodes and it has a strong enough beginning, I would still recommend it for entertainment purposes because it won't take up much of your time and there's a chance you'll really like it. And even if you don't, it won't waste that much of your time anyway. Now it's time for spoiler territory, so if you haven't uh, finished the show, I would not go past here unless you're curious. Once again, not going to do a big overview, I don't know if I'll do that anymore, just thought I would go over some key points about the show. First, I'll talk about Satoru's ability, Revival. Now this never gets explained, and I imagine the author really just wanted to use it as a gimmick to make the mystery more entertaining. Which to be fair, I actually appreciate that, even if it seems lazy, over how Life is Strange did things with its time travel ability. I think the point of Revival was basically to be ironic. Because Satoru wanted to be a superhero, and coincidentally, he had a superhero-like power. But he still didn't see himself as anything special, nor was he happy having a superpower. Didn't make him improve as a person at all. Because what he wanted most was not, in fact, superpowers, but superpowers to make people like him more. Which is kind of what happens by the end. So I guess the reason God or somebody took his ability away at the end was because he found his inner peace, finally, and God or somebody knew that he didn't need that ability anymore. Doesn't take away from the fact that this certainly needed to be better implemented into the show because even then, I think I'm giving it too much credit with that thought process. On to Satoru, he really is kind of bland as a main character. Not only does he have the aforementioned problem of looking terrible compared to his supporting cast, but he also feels too lacking in personality. Also, I know this is complained about often, but the other fact is that he does not even attempt, attempt to solve the mystery. Why? <laughs> Solving the mystery should honestly be simple for him, considering how much knowledge he has due to being from the future, and he'd be able to take advantage of the fact that he's an adult in a kid's body in a lot of situations. I guess the main thing is, he doesn't want to solve the mystery, he just wants people to like him. I guess. Which could have been interesting if that was actually true, come to think of it. Had he been a character from the future who used his knowledge to make people like him more because he was being selfish about it, it would have at least made him more amusing. However, granted, this is a very teenage and simple story, so I guess that's a bit much to ask for in making our character seem really pathetic, as I don't think many people in that age group would appreciate that. But really, in the end portion, when he was discussing that his treasure was saving all his friends and them living happy in his hometown even without him, Bokudake Naimachi, really, really didn't work. Like I said, the only real bond that has been developed at all is the one he had with Kayo, not anyone else. I never once felt like he was becoming good friends with the rest of the group outside of Kenya, maybe a little bit, but even then I wouldn't say I felt like they were really good friends. This is just way too much tell and not enough show, which is a common problem in the storytelling in general. Also, I really, really think this show needed to show us more, not of the revival ability origins, I think that's pointless, but why he became so introverted in the first place. The reason given was that he wasn't able to save people he thought he could in his childhood, but that was just too much of a leap to affect him all the way to when he's 29 without showing us any of the in-between moments. I just feel like, no, I don't buy that. Overall, he isn't the worst character ever, but he's certainly flat and forgettable. 
Now let's talk about Kaio. Kaio shares the same problem as Satoru of being quite one note. Basically all she says, are you an idiot? Like constantly, that's her whole character for the most part. But it's even stronger than Satoru because of that very fact. Funny because I was just watching Durarara with my girlfriend and the character of Akane is established as more human, more sympathetic and better written in half an episode than Kaio is throughout the entirety of the show. Though, comparing a race to Durarara is completely unfair, as one is great and one is terrible, but I th just thought it was amusing. Granted, I don't want to be too hard on her because even though there are a million child abuse stories in media today, at the very least the author did try to craft some decent warm moments. The moment with the foxes running around her and Satoru and them gazing at the Christmas tree in particular were my favorite moments in the whole show. Now one thing that really ruins things for her is how Satoru would occasionally get flustered by her and clearly ended up liking her. This is supremely creepy considering he's a 29 year old guy still. Granted, I've played enough visual novels so I should be desensitized to this kind of behavior in anime, but considering the show actually tries to take itself seriously, it's just a low blow to the whole experience. See, had it not been for that, this could have been a really cute thing, and honestly I could recommend this show to non-anime fans. But as soon as they had both a scene where Satoru's mom and Kaio are bathing together, and Satoru gulps in response, as well as a scene where Satoru's mom asks if she's in the way when they're all sleeping together, and he immediately responds with, Yep. Granted, I believe one of those is anime original, but still. What in the world? That is creepy as hell! Come on! Take yourself a little more seriously, show! Now the sad fact is, people are actually pissed when they didn't end up together. Though, I know why this happens. Because it's literally the only thing the show focuses on, like said before. Which is why after Kaio gets written out of the show early, it's hard to care about anything. Still, I feel like people ignored the context too much and just thought of the cute scenes with them together and apparently that was enough for them. Then again, perhaps it would have been more forgivable for people that she ended up with Hiromi if the show actually showed her having any interaction with anyone but Satoru. Oh, by the way, how her problem gets resolved is pretty much the laziest thing the show ever does. Her mother gets confronted and they randomly introduce Kaio's grandmother which gives us a pity backstory for her and then it's just all kind of settled as abruptly as possible. It's like in like four minutes it feels like. It just kind of felt like the writer wanted to write it out so they could finally focus on other things even though there's like no time left to focus on other things. Considering this is supposed to be the most satisfying moment of the show which is Kaio being freed of her abuse and ultimately fell flat and empty. I guess this is also because Kaio's mother was nothing more than a one-note bitch, but still, it didn't even try here. On to Irie, who is perfecto girlfriendo. Granted, I like that she was proactive and actually had some personality, and clearly since she's nothing but a side character, I should be more forgiving of her. But it honestly just felt weird because there was literally no reason for her to like Satoru other than the author telling me so. I'll give her points for surprising me that she actually punched that one dude right in the face. Oh, that's why she ends up with Satoru. Because every other dude around her is an asshole. But I think the thing I'll remember the most about Irie is that she has the lowest scale of a backstory with drama attached to it that I think I've ever heard. Apparently, her parents got divorced because her dad was accused of stealing a chocolate bar. A chocolate bar. All I could think of was this was the backstory out of some smart ass American TV show because you know Americans, they cannot stand not being smart ass. And if that was the case, Satoru would have been totally like, you're not serious, are you? Or, well, oh, at least it tasted good. But no, the anime just wanted me to take this seriously. Author, you really, really need to work on your drama. Just saying. I was debating on talking about Satoru's mom at length, but really, what is there to say other than she's there to be a supreme badass? I mean, remember that scene where the directors tried to make her look so cool when she had a shovel get swung at her by Kaio's mom and blood started trickling down her face was like, come on, you're trying way too hard here. You know, even if the only badass thing she did in the show was to be seen taking care of Satoru the entire time when he was in a coma, 
she would have still come across as the most badass mom ever. No need for all these, like, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure elements. She already has a great personality. But these other scenes just make it feel like she's tacky. Now, granted, despite all that, she's still the best character in the show by far. And she also has the best actor. Which kind of shows you the quality of the writing you can expect from a race. Then we have Kenya, who is perfecto best friendo. Yes, he also doesn't act like a kid, but everyone can tell that right away. The saddest thing about him is that he's smarter than Satoru, the freaking 29 year old. Also, did anyone else laugh in that scene where Satoru tried to kill Kaio's mom or something and Kenya was all like, don't be too hasty. I mean, Jesus, this guy is a psychoanalyst and a therapist. My guess is the author could not figure out a way for the other kids to be useful without gifting them the intelligence of an adult. Which is a real shame, because it would have been fun to see if the author could have been creative enough to have the other kids be useful to Satoru, despite having an immature mindset. They could have made it so that they were thinking outside the box that Satoru was thinking at, because they don't have the same thought process as an adult. Oh, and also, trying to get Kenya to tell us that he doesn't try to help Kayo despite knowing about her problems is not a flaw, by the way. You know how you portray flaws? You have to show them. You can't just tell us about flaws. You have to show them. Okay? It's very simple. We have to believe the flaws of the character without them being pointed out for us. For example, Satoru is an idiot! Though I don't think that flaw was intentional. I really think the author was trying to make Satoru look better here, but it just didn't work because it was too obvious. Then finally, we have Yashiro, because every other character is really no character at all in the rest of the story. Many people have complained about how predictable the mystery was because, well, honestly, it had to be a dude and it had to be related to Satoru's past, so yes, it was very predictable. Plus, the director was a bit too obvious with him in many scenes. But to give it credit, a mystery is not just a who done it, is it? That's right, there's two other parts, which is the how done it and why done it. If you've ever played Phoenix Wright, for example, you know you can't pin the culprit unless you can explain all three of these things. In fact, that's what makes a good mystery. Now, the how done it also becomes more obvious by the time all the lollipops fall out of his car, though I will say I didn't guess that he had multiple cars, even though I probably should have. However, what's impossible to figure out is the why done it. Is there any clues in the show that would hint to us that Yashiro has a reason to kill little girls? The answer is no, because he simply has to tell you. Granted, Erased isn't the only mystery guilty of this, but honestly, it just makes things very bland. There's far more reason to believe Yuki was still the one to do it because he was the one where you were actually given clues onto why done it. Now, people complain that in the manga, his character was given more depth in his backstory and in that we were given more reason for his motivation, but that's not the issue here. The issue is that none of the backstory leads to the clues in the story that the audience could possibly figure out. His backstory is irrelevant anyway, because by doing this, they might as well have just said, I did it because I'm really messed up in the head. Like, so many characters. That's usually what they're telling you, and it's like, like, so basically you did it because you're messed up in the head. Yes? Okay. In which case, give us the damn clues that he's messed up in the head throughout the show. Maybe they are there, and if they are, they're really vague. But I honestly can't think of any. Further making him a terrible character was his decision to save Satoru at the end from the time he attempted to drown him. Why? Because he becomes obsessed with him for some reason that his really weird backstory told us so. See, that's the thing about his whole character. I did it because I told you so. That's, that's his whole character, that's his whole writing. That's not how you write compelling villains. And that's not how you write compelling mysteries. It makes him shallow and incredibly unbelievable. His obsession with Satoru was just a cheap gimmick so that Satoru would end up surviving to the end of the series and nothing more. But otherwise, you could essentially replace him with a certain other villain in something I've reviewed here, and it wouldn't change much because all he is is a typical gimmicky killer person. Overall, I think the main issue with the race, though, is it had no clue. No clue what it wanted to be. It's not really a friendship bonding anime, like it's tried to state at the end, because it spends literally zero time with Satoru bonding with his friends. It's not really much of a time travel story because it's hardly utilized. And it's really not much of a mystery because our main character hardly tries to solve it himself. So I guess the best thing is I can say is it's a child abuse to recovery story with a lot of extraneous bullshit in it.